Okay, so let's go back to these myths. So myth number one, the wage gap, which you mentioned, this is used by virtually every feminist scholar to suggest that America has some sort of superstructure of patriarchy. What are the real facts about the wage gap? Does it exist? And if so, to what extent? There is a gap of about 20 cents. If you look at all men and all women working full time, you will find this gap. However, it doesn't take into account relevant factors that, that justify different wages. What did you major in in college? What profession are you in? How many hours uh, do you work per week? When you do these controls, the wage gap begins to narrow and in some studies, it vanishes. So if you look at majors, college majors, you will make more money on average if you go into, I don't know, petroleum engineering or naval architecture or metallurgy. Apparently you make money <laughs> and a PhD in metallurgy. But if you go into early childhood education, social work or women's studies, not as much. So that counts. And, oh, you know, then we look, well, who, who majors in petroleum engineering? It's mostly men. And who majors in early childhood education? Mostly women. So that is not, you know, you have to take into account these relevant factors. And what I see in study after study is they either don't do it or they play a little game like the American Association of University Women. They will say, oh, yes, it's true. When you take relevant, you know, factors into control, it narrows. But there's still a gap. And then they insist but uh, of, you know, they'll say 12 cents or 15 cents. But uh, but they don't take all of the relevant factors because they're probably 20 or 25 things. I mean, look at things like the danger of a job. If you look at the the death gap, it's almost all men. I think it's 94% of, of fatalities in the workplace are men, Labor Department data. And every year, you know, so it, it, we've got about 5,000 people who die in the workplace, almost all men. So that's another thing. They never look at the workplace as a totality. What jobs are people doing? And most of the gritty, dangerous jobs, you know, how, have you seen a woman like as a roofer or if you're in a high rise building and there's some guy out there, it's always a guy rushing the windows. And, you know, so there's a, you do get a pay premium for danger. You do get a pay premium for working odd hours or strange hours. Now, when I debate them, they'll say, yes, OK, fine, you're right. But it's still discrimination because why is it that men take those jobs and women take their, their jobs. And why are women's jobs degraded and so forth? Well, that's an interesting question, but they've now changed the, the focus of the argument because we're not talking about equal pay for equal work. We're now talking about they, they sort of want comparable pay for similar work or, you know, or they want the society to, um, you know, do something about the fact that women do. I mean, the main reason women earn less is that when women have kids, they tend to withdraw or, you know, work less. And when men have kids, they work more. So they'll say, well, why is that? That's sexism. Well, again, we're, we're no longer talking about employers and we're no longer talking about, you know, a wage gap that's because some evil employers are uh, deliberately paying men more. It's, they change the ground. But even when you go there and ask, why do people do what they do? And, you know, is, is it a sex role sort of thing? That's a different set of arguments, but the, even there, their arguments are not persuasive because if I look at the patriarchy and say, okay, that's my hypothesis, that we, were, we do what we do because we've all been conditioned under patriarchy. And then I see the United States is less patriarchal than it's ever been. Women are constantly encouraged to do all sorts of things. In schools, little kids are encouraged to play with all sorts of toys, but the kids insist. The kids are the ones that you know, are you know, they stereotype themselves. And you even see the kinds of play, little girls with dolls. The feminists have been very upset by that because they think that that conditions them to be mothers and we should bond little boys with dolls. Well, they've tried that. And then the little boys will, you know, turn them. I've been to co conferences where they're, they'll cry to say, well, yes, I tried to use bubbles and dolls and get the boys to play. And then they turn them into torpedoes, you know, this sort of thing. You know, they can't. <laughs> And, and, and by the way, the, the gender feminists don't like it when I bring up, you know, any of us bring up those examples because they still think it's conditioning. It's good. Well, maybe it was conditioning that made them gender feminists. I mean, then we get into an argument about free will and determinism. 
And we changed the ground again into this meta. And the, in an interesting argument about ultimate freedom of self determination. But I think that we have to, at this point, credit women with agency when they choose what they're going to major in, when they choose the field. If they want to stay home with kids, then I think that it's matronizing to suggest that they aren't responsible for their own lives.